What's the word, y'all? We're getting closer and closer to the end of the NBA regular season, and it is kind of like awards time. I just put together my fake ballot of all of the winners, and we'll talk about that in a future video. But Bleach Report gave out an award to every single team. Let's get into it. I have not reacted to a Bleach Report article since I left the company, so this should be interesting. Shout out to, to Grant Hughes. Handing out awards for every NBA team from the 2023-2024 season. Let's get into it with the Atlanta Hawks. The MVP is DeJounte Murray okay all right they're saying that they take that over um what Trey Young was doing or what they were doing together the Hawks have for like a better team since Trey went out he's coming back it seems like for the in-season tournament game could they beat the Bulls if they're back there I don't know most approved player is easily Jalen Johnson the most unfortunate part is Jalen Johnson is a player that if he played the, the number of games he might have actually won most improved player this season. He's a different most improved than Tyrese Maxey for sure, but he would have at least been in the top three, but he doesn't hit the 65 game threshold. And the flying under the radar war, Bogey Bogdanovich, which makes a lot of sense. Um, Bogey should be in conversations for six man of the year, but throughout the history of six man of the year, there's only been one player to, to win the award without making the playoffs. Technically, the Atlanta Hawks still have a chance to make the playoffs, but it's unlikely. Uh, so that's why he's not getting a lot of buzz. And it's more like Malik Monk, Nas Reed, Norman Powell. These are people contributing to winning basketball. And Bogey is ridiculous because he is actually one of the most impactful on-court players in basketball. Uh, the, the team's offensively is plus 5.5 points per possession. When he's on the court only behind his teammate, Vic Kreji. And then defensively, too, the team is eight points better with him on the court. So it's unfortunate. And I might, this is making me want to change it. It's my ballot. I'm putting Bogey Bogdanovich on my ballot. He might not win it, but I, I was going to kind of go through our history and say that, yeah, nobody's won it without whatever, whatever. He deserves the flying under the radar award from BR. Boston Celtics. The MVP is, of course, Jason Tatum. He's all NBA first team this season. I don't know if you can have a conversation about anybody else outside of him. I think the top team or the first team is going to be Shea, Luka, Jokic, Giannis, Tatum, some people have been trying to put Kevin Durant in there other than Tatum. Tatum's on one of the best teams of all time right now, and he's the best player. I, I'm giving him that nod. DPOY, of course, going to Derek White. He's doing some ridiculous stuff. Uh, five players in the entire league accumulated 80 blocks and 70 steals. Shout out to him. Better than we planned it a war, Porzingis and Drew Holiday. Yes, some of us. Some of us expected this team to be this good. I'm just saying some of us did. I don't know who those people are. But some of us did. MVP goes to Mikael Bridges for the Brooklyn Nets. Yeah, it's hard to give an MVP to anybody else. I know he had a like a month stretch where he was really, really struggling. But we, we've kind of find out that, found out that that 27 point per game score that he had in those 20-something games last year is not really him. And I think that's okay. It's okay to not be a number one. It's only a select few people in, in, the, in the world right now that could be a number one option on a team. Mikhail, unfortunately, is not that, but that is okay. He could be maybe three, maybe two. DPOY goes to Claxton, and Buckets Galore War goes to Cam Thomas because, of course, it does. Charlotte Hornets MVP is going to go to Miles Bridges. The rookie of the year goes to Brandon Miller, who, after a slower start, has been phenomenal. And then we might have something here, Trey Mann. I think a lot of people, when they saw that Trey, was like, oh, so happy to see Trey Mann get a new opportunity, get real minutes, and he's been taking advantage of those real minutes. Shout out to him. Chicago Bulls, the MVP is going to go to the DeMar DeRozan. Of course, he might be the clutch player of the year. Most improved goes to Kobe White. I think he's going to finish second in most improved player this season and, and like throughout the entire league. And wait, he's only making how much money is Ayo Um, Kobe and Ayo Sumu, our backcourt right now, because Zach Levine has been out with his injury, are both making contracts that are steals. We also have some really bad contracts on the team, so we can't even capitalize on two really good players or small contracts because we got a couple people on bigger contracts that are some of the worst contracts in the league according to certain people but io has been amazing he's been getting better and better throughout the course of the season 39.6 percent beyond the arc this season that that was after last year he struggled uh then we get the cleveland cavaliers mvp is of course donovan mitchell um other than this recent stretch donovan mitchell has been phenomenal dpoy goes to jared allen if he doesn't make an all defensive team i don't know what to tell you I, he's been he's been great on that side of the ball and held it down award goes to craig porter jr when they were without darius garland they were without evan mobley craig porter came in and played big time minutes he had a game against my bulls where he looked like andre miller i will never forget that game as long as i live and um, yeah, he was phenomenal. And then he was okay with basically just going back to a reserve role once everybody came back. He really held it down when they were on that, what, 20 and four stretch. Dallas Mavericks, you know who the MVP is. Might be the MVP of the entire league. I still don't know just yet. Rookie of the year goes to Derek Lively. And the sweet 
Sound of Silence Award. I'm guessing this is just talking about how it's been a season without controversy for Kyrie. Seems so like the last couple before this, he always was in something. And this year he was in nothing. I can't, you can't name a single thing about Kyrie Irving other than buckets and game winners and so on and so forth. MVP for the Denver Nuggets, of course, MVP. Uh, MVP is is Nikola Jokic. DPO Wag goes to Aaron Gordon, and Overkill Award goes to Michael Porter Jr. And they're he's, they're saying that because they're 16 to three when he scores at least 22. What can you say? This team is might might be the favorite to win a championship again this season. Next, Detroit Pistons MVP is Cade, and especially the last couple weeks slash months he's been really turning it up. Good signs. Rookie years of Star Thompson get well soon, and trust the flashes award Jaden Ivey. I'm kind of hoping they don't trust the flashes, so Jaden Ivey can come to Chicago. So it's unlikely. It's really, really unlikely. But yeah, he does show those flashes. Uh, Warriors, Steph Curry, MVP. Rookie year goes to AirPods. Should make an all-rookie team, if you ask me. And two timelines award goes to Jonathan Kaminga. I still, even though Jonathan Kaminga has turned into a very, 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 very good NBA player, I still hate the idea of two timelines because we basically threw this way this year away of Steph Curry. And Steph Curry had gone through like a month and a half slump or so, so he hasn't been the Steph Curry from like 2016, but we can't really expect that. Um, and the two timeline things is kind of one of the reasons they have a bunch of young players and they also have people like Draymond and, and Clay Thompson and, and Steph Curry. So it was just a rough year and they still have a chance to make some noise, but you know, they're the 10th seed right now. Houston Rockets, MVP goes to Freddie. I was hoping it was going to go to Ime Yudoka, but Freddie makes a lot of sense too. Most improved goes to Al P, who would also, just like I said with Jalen Johnson, he would be in conversations for the actual award if he meet those 65 games. Unfortunately, he won't. And then this time it counts award. Oh, it is it's not necessarily a bad thing, but we might have to blame have to blame Jalen Green for Shingun's lost team MVP. Hmm? Oh, this time it counts in at March when he averaged 27. They're assuming that they're hoping that this is like closer to the real version of him. Okay, Indiana Pages, Tyrese's MVP. Rookie of the year goes to Pascal because it's the first year that they've, they've been together. I haven't looked at the numbers in some time, but it says that they are plus 3.7 net rating when they're on the court. Um, when, when Pascal's on the court, last time I checked it, which would have been like three or so weeks ago, they were a net negative with Tyrese Halliburton and Pascal. But again, that was very early in their, their relationship and everything. Uh, so I'm hoping, and I'm assuming it's better now because they've been winning games too. Uh, TJ McConnell shot the system award. I, I gave him an award on my podcast called um, Most Feared Bench Player. No, it's not Nas Reed. No, it's not some of the people we talked about earlier for six men a year, but it's a TJ McConnell, little dude, come off the bench and just give you buckets in the mid range and get into the basket. MVP goes to Kawhi for the Clippers. Six man of the year goes to Norman Powell for sure. Embracing the reality tech, James Harden and Russell Westbrook. I said this about Russ before. I actually have a video on this channel where I ranked every single season of Russell Westbrook's career. It's one of my favorite. It is my favorite video that I ever created in my life. Um, and one of the things that I mentioned with Russell Westbrook is about him being adaptable later in his career. Um, and I mean, I mean like the last season and a half after leaving the Lakers. And it's hard for a lot of former superstars to do that. Russell Westbrook has done that gracefully. And James Harden started to do that too this year after years of us wondering, do we have to play James Harden ball for him to be successful, even though he also was just going through a little slump? Um, the answer is probably no. We'll see come playoff time. Lakers, MVP Braun. I'm actually surprised they didn't give it to Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis, Anthony Davis, I think this season has been the better player. That don't mean that Braun is bad. I think it's like obviously very close, but I would probably gave it to, to AD low-key. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with this part. The defense has been ridiculous. And on top of his offensive game and him being healthy, I would say that he's probably the better player on the team and LeBron's almost 40, so I think he's okay with that. He's probably been wanting Anthony Davis to be the better player on the team for some time. Um, still a still a war goes to Austin Reeves after starting, then coming off the bench, then starting again. He's been really, really good, and they're, they've been good too. Grizzlies! MVP goes to Desmond Bain. DPOY goes to Jaron. And look what we found goes to Gigi Jackson. Gigi is one of the highest touted um, high school players in his class. Obviously, he went over to college. It didn't go perfectly. Got to the league with his 47th overall pick. He looks great. I didn't watch a lot of Grizzlies this season, so I'm going to fly through that one. The Miami Heat MVP goes to Jimmy Butler. DPOY goes to Bam. And cool moves. Where did you get him goes to Duncan Robinson. 
Um, yeah, he put the ball on the floor a lot this season, way more than any time in his previous career. I'm surprised Bam to get MVP as well. Shout out to Jimmy, but I think Bam has been more consistent this season. Maybe MVP is not about consistency. The Miami Heat outscored their opposition by 149 points in Butler's minutes. Oh, okay, never mind. Give it to Jimmy Butler. That stat is all I needed. <laughs> that stat is all I needed. Next, Milwaukee Bucks. MVP goes to Giannis. Clutch player of the year goes to Dame. And how'd he only get a minimum award goes to Malik Beasley, who's 42% from three. He's been a saving grace for a team that needs more shooting or needed more shooting. He's been great at that. Shout out to Malik. He bet on himself, and he's probably going to get paid this offseason. Minnesota Timberwolves is MV, MV, MVP. DPOI goes to Rudy Gobert. And best rotation player that nobody recognized the war goes Nikhil Alexander Walker. I love that because Nikhil Alexander Walker is one of those players that came into the league as a, one identity. And as he continues to get older and starts to keep himself uh, employed, he's turned himself into one of the better defensive players in the league. He always makes the right decision. He hits his shots. He passes right. I love Nikhil Alexander Walker. I love that award. Um, next, we got the Pels. MVP goes to the depth. It's the first time they didn't give it to a real player. I'm surprised there. Herb Jones gets DPOY because, of course, he should make an all-defensive team this year. And seeking agree then goes to Trey Murphy III. On my podcast, I talked about how high I am on Trey Murphy III as a player. And we'll see. Oh, I wasn't showing y'all. We'll see if he can hit that heights. New York Knicks. MVP, of course, Jalen Bronson. He's the best point guard in the Eastern Conference right now, just counting this season. Clutch player of the year. War goes to Miles McBride and Josh Hart. And uh, yeah, I was going to say it's probably not because of their hitting clutch shots, but OG goes down. Julius Randle goes down. These dudes immediately come into the lineup and playing 48 minutes in, in some cases. Like, ridiculous stuff. Uh, Let it fly award, Dante DiVincenzo. There's only a certain amount of people that are extremely feared on the catch and shoot. Dante is one of those people. OKC Thunder, Shea's MVP, most approved goes to J-Dub, and there's not a crowd award, I don't know what that means, goes to Chet Holmgren. Ah, guy who would have run away with Rookie of the Year in any normal season award. Of course, it's Wimby's year, but yeah, if it was any other season, Chet is probably winning that award. J-Dub being a year two player is not going to get him the actual award, but his improvements have gone from... Uh, really good starter player. I'm excited to see what he can be to, oh my God, is this guy going to make six all-star appearances in his career or more? Like that's how good J-Dub has been this year. Next year, he might be an all-star that quick. Uh, Orlando Magic, see Palos MVP, DPOY goes to Jayla Suggs, of course. And per minutes DPOY war, I said on my show that the, the best defender in the entire world right now is Jonathan Isaac. He don't play enough minutes. And he also ain't hit the, the threshold for the games played, but he would be... You know, he's that impactful defensive player. You got to watch those Orlando Magic and watch those seven-minute stretches where he is unleashed and he just dogs defensively. 76ers still give it to Jordan B. Most approved goes to Tyrese Maxey. And thanks for being there as B-Ball Paul. Shout out to B-Ball Paul. I've been high on him. He's one of my favorite prospects coming out of college. I thought he did a lot of things the right way, and we're seeing that as the backup in Philadelphia. The Suns see Kevin Durant win MVP. A most approved player goes to Grayson Allen because he cannot miss. He has not missed all season long. And who needs a point guard war goes to Devin Booker because who needs a point guard when you have Devin Booker? He's having a career high in assists per game. Um, that was one of the biggest question marks for the Suns. And I think a lot of people still have that question. And I think it's I think it's valid to have that question going into the playoffs. But Devin Booker has looked as good as you could expect for a guy um, who's never really played point guard in his professional career, at least for this long of a stretch. Portland Trail Blazers. We're going to see Malcolm Brogdon win MVP. Wow. Um, hey, it's technically the first year of the rebuild, even though they missed the playoffs the last three seasons. It's technically the first year to rebuild, so it's okay that this is your MVP. Rick here goes to school Henderson. Yeah, yeah. And diamond in a rough, Delano Banton. If you know, you know. I've been high on Delano Banton for like three seasons and waiting for him to have an opportunity. And uh, the Trail Blazers, that time. Next, we got the Kings. MVP goes to De'Aaron Fox. I'm surprised they did not give it to DeMontis Sabonis. The Sacramento Kings fell apart with DeMontis Sabonis' play without De'Aaron Fox getting outscored by 5.9 points per 100 possessions. Reverse that to 50 possessions where Fox played without Sabonis and the Kings' net rating is a plus 2.8. The big man double-double. Okay, but I think that's a flawed way to kind of look at it. I honestly do. Because they're not talking about DeMontis Sabonis not playing at all. They're talking about when they were split on the court. When this is talking about when De'Aaron Fox didn't play at all. And I just think those are apples to oranges. It's just, it's a lot easier to take the numbers of a, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that's necessarily fair to DeMontis Sabonis. I'm not mad at De'Aaron Fox winning this either. He's been great this year too. But I would have thought it would have been DeMontis Sabonis. Six man of the year goes Malik Monk. Yep. Yep. This guy um, is going to, this guy's going to matter award is Keon Ellis. Love the fact that he's been getting a lot of burn. 
Um, he was great in Summer League, and I'm happy that he got a chance to do it with the Kings. Next, MVP goes to Victor Wibanyama for the Spurs. Most improved goes to Jeremy Sohan. And then outshadowed the award goes to Devin Vassell, who, as the season progressed, he started to get better and better as his connection with Victor Wibanyama got better. I like this award. Toronto Raptors is going to see Scotty Barnes, Scotty Barnes wins MVP. Most improved goes to RJ. RJ is not only getting to the basket because he's always been able to get to the basket, but he's finishing at the basket. That was something we didn't know if he could do it, and he's doing it, uh, which is great. And he also can hit his threes now. Better Late Than Never award goes to Masai, the first front office award. We've given out all video. Next, we got Utah Jazz. MVP goes to the Marksman. Shout out to the homie. A uh, record year goes to Keontae George. And get this guy away from your award is Chris Dunn. I love that Chris Dunn is getting some love because he's one of the toughest defenders in the league as well. His screen navigation is crazy. He'll pick you up 94 feet. I love everything about Chris Dunn's game since we traded for him in Chicago. Um, he was actually doing that stretch where he was a boy. He was my favorite boy. I, I had a Chris Dunn jersey. God damn it. I had a Chris Dunn jersey. And lastly, MVP goes to Denny Abdiya for the Washington Wizards. He was definitely in Proved a ton this year across the board on pretty much every single metric. Rookie of the year will go to Bilal Kulabali, who got injured and missed the last couple weeks slash month. And caretaker award goes to Tyus Jones, who does not turn the ball over. And he also does not foul. He does not foul. He has like 50 fouls on the entire season. And we got, what, three games left? It makes zero sense. Let me know what you think. How did they do? The Bleach Report article, Grant Hughes and BR team, did they really put it together? Do you agree or disagree with your favorite team? Leave a like, and I'll see y'all tomorrow.